Welcome back. You might be joining us from our first video on hyperkalemia when we talked about potassium homeostasis and what can throw it out of whack. Today, we'll be talking about how we treat hyperkalemia. So let's imagine that a patient is presented to you in the emergency department with a dangerous hyperkalemia defined as a potassium in excess of 6.5. Our patient today is portrayed by Worf from Star Trek as that's just who I felt like drawing today. You'll discover Worf's potassium of 8 by one of two methods either because you're handed a blood test that confirms it, or because you're handed an ECG showing the typical abnormalities discussed in our first video. You must first act quickly to get the next urgent test done. If you've seen the blood test, you must get an ECG to see whether that dangerous arrhythmia is developing. If you've done the ECG, you must get an urgent blood test, ideally a point of care one, to confirm the hyperkalemia. If there is evidence of cardiac instability on the ECG in the presence of hyperkalemia, the first treatment is usually calcium gluconate or calcium chloride. Calcium won't bring your potassium back down to normal, but it can stabilize the myocardium, telling those overexcited heart muscle cells to calm the down. You may need to give more than one treatment to ensure those ECG changes have resolved. Once you've stabilised the heart, you need to bring the potassium down quickly and safely. It's difficult to get potassium out of the body quickly, so, like sweeping dust under a rug, we push that potassium into the cells. Two drugs are commonly used to do this. One is salbutamol, a beta agonist given as a nebulizer. The other is insulin, typically given alongside dextrose to prevent the hormone from simultaneously dropping your blood sugar. Both encourage cells to take up potassium from the interstitium, driving down potassium in the extracellular space and remedying the problem forever. Hmm, not quite. It's critical to remember that this is a temporary fix. As the drug clears, potassium will diffuse back into the interstitium, pushing your plasma potassium back up into the danger zone. Your next step, therefore, is to monitor the response to treatment as recurrent hyperkalemia is a very common problem. The best and most effective treatment is to treat the underlying cause. If Spiro is turning down your sodium potassium pump, it needs to be stopped to allow potassium excretion to resume. If an acute kidney injury can be reversed, it should be, as you need the kidneys back in the game to flush that potassium out. If the kidneys aren't working, either due to a very severe acute injury or chronic end-stage disease. You might find yourself with refractory hyperkalemia, high potassium that doesn't respond to the treatments that we've talked about. These patients may need dialysis, the use of an artificial kidney to clear the potassium from the blood. How this works is beyond the scope of today's video, but it's important to remember it as an option in the event that these other treatments haven't worked. Sometimes, patients with chronic kidney disease are given a drug called calcium risonium. This binds to potassium and keeps it out of the way. So let's recap. If you are handed a venous gas with a raised serum potassium and you're confident it's not a hemolyzed sample, act quickly to get an ECG and treat according to your local guidelines. You must identify and address the cause, remembering to monitor the potassium regularly during treatment. And that's all I've got to say about that. Hope you found this whistle-stop tour of potassium useful. We'll be back very soon with some more videos. And in the meantime, don't forget to subscribe.